it's just so many people I can, I can thank, so I don't want to just leave anybody out. So if I left you out, I'm sorry, but you know, I, I want to thank everybody, you know. I everybody said, man, you really helped me out to give me the uh, knowledge. It's just, you know, just lift me up. Now, now. Man, first time I picked up a football, life. I said I was probably around like, what, four or five. When I get in the game and I'm seeing guys make plays, I'm like, man, I could have made that play. I know I could have scored that play, you know what I mean? So, like, I kind of, like, I want to say I get, like, mad at myself. I'm like, damn, man, I could have did that. I kind of, like, feel it in my heart, you know? I'm not the same in terms of, like, running and, like, jumping and doing certain, certain movements. Other than that, man, I want great anything else, you know? I grew up in an apartment complex called Old Forest uh, on the east side of town of Savannah, Georgia. Um, I want to say it definitely wasn't, it wasn't the worst neighborhood, but it definitely wasn't the best, you know? Man, all the, all the older guys in my neighborhood knew it had something in me. Don't smoke around me, don't pass me the joint. The ball was like, it was my high. I, they didn't want to let me smoke, but that was my high, you know what I mean? Like, I mean, man, when I put myself in the football field, everything I was going through at my house, everything I was going through, in life, like everything, like nothing really mattered, man. I didn't have to face reality. Like this is my way of having fun. Like being a kid, uh, I probably had about 25 offers I'm coming out of high school. During the time, man, Wake Forest is an up and coming uh, program. So they didn't have all these uh, buildings and nutrition center. But one thing I love about Wake Forest was the people. And they had like a vision. They had Coach Clausen, he had a vision. He kind of sold me that vision, you know? That's what ultimately made me come here. Quick snap, handoff, Bird, crease left side, 45-50. Bird's got speed. Here he goes. My red shirt freshman year, playing Utah State. And Utah State, they kind of like misfit the gaps. And I broke, and I'm looking like, man, it's too easy, man. I'm like, no, I can't. I'm not going to score my first college touchdown like that. Like, somebody's coming. Like, I look to my right, and I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm gone. I kept getting injured. So I kind of like talked to my coach, like, uh, can I switch over to defense? Maybe I can be more durable over there. So on my very first play um, at corner doing one-on-ones, my foot kind of like tripped up on his foot, and then uh, I fell down. And once I fell down, I kind of like grabbed my leg. When I, when I saw my knee in my hand, it was like a big old dent. Then I started screaming, oh, f oh, f I get in the ambulance, uh, get to the hospital. The doctor came in the room. So he's like, yeah, you told your ACL? And I'm like, yeah, I figured. Then he said, PCL? And I said, damn. Then he said, LCL? I said, okay, damn. Then he said, uh, MCL? I said, all right, man, just cut it out, cut it out. Like, you ain't got to say no more. Like, just, just chill. He said, well, your meniscus too? And I'm like, oh, f And I'm like, all right, dog, go ahead and leave, man. Here we go right here, pick. Come to me, Jay. TV. Talk to me, Jay. Bro, you show me a play for the start. Yep. Ah, That's what we needed right there. Ah, I heard. I heard. Jimmy Ante. Belly Mill. Uh, man, he been my roommate's sophomore year. Yeah, and not now, right now. Jay, that's my boy, man. So I think um, we just got done with a drill, I think it was like around the grass practice field. And all I hear is like, people would just stop practicing, what's going on? And I see Key on the ground, I was like, ooh. I mean, I felt bad trying to like keep his head up. Um, I don't know, it was just, I knew it was tough for him, but he had a lot, a lot of good, you know, friends around him. So I knew he'd be fine, you know, Key. As long as he got had his smile, still talking to him, you know, his family, he'd be fine, he'd get through it. You know, it was kind of, you know, <laughs> It was it was kind of funny, Kim. It was, it was messed up when you had to walk in the snow. In the <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I did four months without walking. I had to make people had to take off of them. Damn. I wasn't like making major progress. I couldn't really run like I wanted to. I had a big limp in my run. Um, I wasn't moving well, like I was just moving real stiff. I had a lot of scar tissue, I didn't have three surgeries. I kind of like started like fill that out back in my head, but I never like really too much like, don't give up, you know what I mean? Like keep going hard. Uh, but then doctor told me, man, like 
uh, we don't want you to go back and play because, like, if you misstep or if you mess that knee up again, man, you had so much tra trauma done to your knee, what, like, we can, like, uh, uh, amputate your leg or something like that. So I get a call one day. Uh, my mom told me uh, they had to fly him out to, uh, from Savannah to Atlanta in the, air, in the helicopter. Uh, he's got a seizure. Uh, things not looking too well. He's in the hospital right now. You need to come. You need to get up here ASAP. This was him at the hospital, man. Even when he was sick and he was down and out, like his spirit was so high. This when he had the hospital sick. He dancing, doing his thing. <laughs> Acting a <the> fool. <laughs> I missed the first day of practice out with my brother, right? I get injured February 26, 27, 27, whatever. Then my brother passed away March 26. The last thing I told him, man, was like, I love you. Like, everything's gonna be good and I'm gonna be there. I'm coming there now. He told me, like, he loved me too. And my last thing I ever told him, and I get a call back from my dad like 30 minutes later, told me he passed away. And then my auntie just pulled over to the side and we just started bawling. We just started crying and now I lost my relief. I, I lost like a major thing happened in my life, my brother, and I lost the way of me helping me let go of my emotions. So now I gotta tame my emotions, you know what I mean? So now I'm like, damn, like, I gotta find something, like I gotta find my niche now. And it definitely felt like I was special to this program, so they were telling me, like, hey, we got this role for you as a student coach. And former player did this before, Alante Bay, Malik Terry, like, last year they did this before, and we want you to play this role, and we think you do a good job at it. And this is, is this something you want to do? Do you feel comfortable with this situation? I'm like, yeah, like, I want to do this. I mean, so when I came in as a student coach, and I got that connection back where, I mean, more involved to the game plan. Like, I know when things going on and just things like that, you know. Uh, so I help out all the younger guys. So uh, if coach, coach might be with the older guys, I'm with the young guys, just kind of helping them out. I'm like, just assisting them. Uh, like, I'm still the same guy, man. Like, I'm gonna tell you what to do. I want the best for you. And a lot of guys know, man, like, I care for people and like, they know I want the best for them. He, he deserved everything that come in his way. He worked for it and he earned this. He got hurt, he took it. He said, you know what, I want to be involved around the team. How can I still pour my love and passion for this game into others? We all know who Arkeem was as a player, right? Now, how can you take that Arkeem as a player and pour it into someone else? And that's what he's doing. I have a brief moment with him before, um, and it just tells him how proud I am, you know, and I'm very proud of him. Man, it was different for me. Uh, I was texting my cousin, Sheree, she'll be up here. Um, she was like, hey, we coming down for senior night. And I get a uh, message from a lot of my family members. And a lot of my family members, I was like, okay, why are y'all gonna come up? It's like, it's not that special to me. Cause it's like, I'm not even playing. Like, I'm, I'm, on, I'm gonna be on the sideline, you know? I feel like I still got that same mentality as I was about to go out and play the game. All I do is signal call, but like, it's something like I still uh, approach as a player. Uh, once I start playing football, I realize, man, we need something like something to help athletes prepare themselves for life after football. So I want to get in like player development because I, I feel like I would have a passion for that. I came too far to look back now, like I done been through all this and I sacrificed so many things in my life to get to this point. Like, why would I give it all up now? Right here, man. This is my auntie Nessa right here. Hi. This is my auntie Gwen. He lived with me in Savannah. <laughs> it's like a big family thing. Like, my house was the spot, you know, so. Uh, uh, my mom and daddy kind of like did the best they can with us, you know. We went through a lot and 
like mom wasn't always at the house. Dad wasn't like always at the house. So like when dad and mom wasn't there, like we had to provide for each other. Uh, I say that what got us really close. That's what made me the person I am today. And that's what made me like really value loyalty, you know, cause like the guys had to depend on me, man. Like they had to depend on me to make sure to do what I said I was going to do, you know what I mean? If not, then like who else going to do it for us? You know, you're here with your family right now, and I know how much family means to you. Right. And uh, you told me that you didn't see the big deal, all of them coming, uh, because you weren't playing anymore. Right. But when you ran out there yesterday, and, um, you know, it was almost like you had that last chance to run out on the field again, and then you ran to them. Uh, did you feel better about it? Like you told you? Yeah, I was like, man, I'm tripping, man. Why did I even say that? <laughs> When I first saw him, like, they let like, all y'all come down field. I thought they let my mom, my dad, and they let everybody down field. My nephew, my brother, my auntie. It was amazing to see that feeling. I feel like everything happened for a reason. I feel like God has a plan. And I feel like this is God's plan. That wasn't my plan. I had dreams of going to the NFL. I thought that was going to be my way of changing people, changing my family lives, but that's not my way. That's not my plan. I got a bigger plan than that. Some way, somehow in the future, like, I'm still going to be able to do that, but just in a different light, a different way. You know what I mean? Different road. If you had anything after all of this that you could tell your brother right now, knowing that you about to graduate, knowing that you really made something of yourself, what would you tell him? We did it, man. We did it. Like all the sacrifices that we went through, um, everything that we've been through, like we here and we did it, man. Like there's a major step. It's only the first step, but I'm gonna keep on going, you know what I mean? Like